Rather than just use the operations predefined in the language, programmers also define their own operations, called functions. Functions are also sometimes called routines, subroutines, procedures, or in some contexts, methods. Function, though, is the most common term. Once the programmer has defined a function and given it a name, they can invoke, or call as we say, that function just like they invoke one of the built-in operations. In parentheses, you write the name of the function, followed by however many operands are expected by the function. To create a function in Pigeon, we use a function statement, beginning with the reserved word function. That's followed by the name you choose for the function, an identifier, and after that, parameters, which we'll explain in a moment, and then indented on the following lines, you write the body, a series of statements that execute when the function is invoked. So here, for example, we create a very simple function called Eric. This function Eric has no parameters, and it just has one statement in its body, print hello. So having created this function, we can then invoke it by simply putting its name in parentheses. And because it takes no operands, we just write the function name in parentheses, and that's it. When we invoke this function Eric, all it does is print hello. Now functions, like operations, can take input values, but rather than calling those input values operands, we usually call them arguments. And when we invoke a function, the arguments are passed to parameters, which are variables in the function that receive the input values. So here, for example, we create a function we call Ryan, and we give it two parameters, the first called bat, and the second called goat. Then in the body of this function, what we'll do is subtract the value of bat from goat and print the resulting value. So if we then invoke the function with the arguments 4 and negative 9, the value 4 gets passed to the parameter bat, and the value negative 9 gets passed to the parameter goat. And so in the first invocation of this function, when we subtract bat from goat, 4 from negative 9, we get negative 13, and the function will print negative 13. In the second invocation of Ryan here, the argument 3 is passed to bat, and the argument 5 is passed to goat, so when we subtract bat from goat, we get 2, and so the function prints the value 2. Operations can not only take input values, they can return an output value. To return an output value, we use a return statement. Here, for example, is a function jerry, which simply returns the value 3. When we invoke jerry here, it returns the value 3, and so this code prints 3. Now let's write a function that might actually be useful, a function that computes and returns a factorial. In case you don't recall, a factorial of a number takes that number and multiplies it by all integers down to 1. So the factorial of 3, for example, is 3 times 2 times 1. The factorial of 0, however, is a special case which always returns 1. So here's one way we could write a factorial function in Pigeon. Let's call the function factorial and give it a single parameter named n. In the body, we use a loop to compute the factorial and store the result in the variable val, which is then returned in the last statement of the body. So if we call the factorial function with the argument 4, it'll return 24 because 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is 24, and then if we call the function with the argument 5, it'll return 120 because 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is 120. Let's step through exactly what goes on when the argument is 4. The parameter n starts with the value 4, and then we assign to the variable val the number 1. Then we enter the loop if n is greater than 0 and n is currently 4, so the condition tests true. In the loop, we multiply n times val, that's 1 times 4 yielding 4, which we assign to val. Then we decrement n by subtracting 1 from n, yielding 3, and assigning the result to n. So when we test the condition again, is n greater than 1? Well, yes, because 3 is greater than 1, so we enter the loop again. And we multiply n times val, n is 3, val is 4, so that's 12, which we assign to val, and then we decrement n again. When we now test the condition, n is 2, still greater than 1. So we enter the loop once more and multiply 2 times 12, yielding 24, which we assign to val. We again decrement n down to 1, but now the condition tests false because 1 is not greater than 1. So we exit the loop and return val, which now has the value 24. So our factorial function invoked with the argument 4 returns 24. And that's what it should return because the factorial of 4 is 24. Quickly though, consider the special case of 0. If we call the function with an argument of 0, val is assigned 1 as usual, but then the condition of the loop tests false right off the bat, so we never enter the loop at all, instead just returning the value 1, which is the correct answer for the factorial of 0.